One of life's great questions, how do we store liquid? The most obvious answer being, of course, in a bottle. But, what if you don't want to store it in a bottle? What if you want to have it in a more accessible vessel? Well, you've come to the right place, because today we're going to explore holding paint outside of its natural environment. Now, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button below. And if you're old to the channel, you probably know I'm a huge fan of using Pringle lids for my palette. A few reasons for this, obviously the recycle reuse appeals to me, I'm not a very wasteful person. On top of that, they're very, very easy to acquire a lot of them, so I can just have a big pile on the side, grab one when I need it. And then the third reason, is, of course, is the delicious free snack that you get with every palette. However, as I use speed paint more and more, it's becoming very apparent to me that they're not particularly good for this style of paint and using them as a palette going forward is not that feasible for me. The lid is slightly concave, so the paint tends to run from the middle down to the moat around the edge of the palette. And they also sort of just merge into each other, which can be a bit of a messy situation if you didn't mean to mix the colors together. Obviously, I've taken one of Army Painter's normal palettes for a spin as well, and while the little walls did help hold the liquids from touching each other inappropriately. I just found there wasn't enough wells, there wasn't enough space for the tiny amounts of speed paint I want to use and the vast quantities of colours I like to go through. On top of that, I found that palette a little bit of a chore to clean. With the Pringles lids, I could just flex them slightly and the paint would pop off. With this, it was a harder, tougher clean. You couldn't bend the palette and paint would get stuck against the walls, which was just a little bit more tricky to clean than normal. And frankly, I'm quite lazy. One final thing to mention is I do actually own a ton of wet palettes. And while they are a great tool for painting, I find for speed paints, they are an absolute no way Jose situation. Those paints are already plenty wet enough you don't want them getting a little bit wetter and on top of that the paint is very likely to seep through the parchment paper and go straight into your sponge and give you a multicolored rainbow sponge so yeah totally avoid wet palettes you want to go for a hard palette for speed paints well there's the backstory and the reasoning for what i've been doing over the last couple of months i've been researching testing trying out trying to find a good solution to my speed paint palette situation problem you guys get to join me at the end of my journey be a bit of a cheetah cheetah spaghetti eater and just see what i've done and my results. Sit back, relax, I'll tell you what I've tried and tested and ultimately give you my suggestions for what you might want to pick up. Not being much of a scientist and not really knowing where to begin, I thought the most obvious thing to do was to go read a book. Now that book wasn't much help, so I moved on to doing some random internet shopping. And with that, I came across a 42 well hard palette. Massive increase in the number of wells, and I thought this could be a fantastic little device. It was airtight, watertight, so I knew I could take it around the house or in my bag and go outside and paint, and no, there won't be any spillage of speed paints. When it did arrive, it was a lot bigger than I expected. While it did have 42 wells, there were 42 fairly big wells, and I just didn't need that space for speed paint. The walls were quite low as well, so any depth to the speed paint would have flooded over. With my particular palette, it actually had a hole in it, a defect when it was manufactured, so it was definitely not going to be watertight. And for all of those reasons, I never even took this for a spin and I just returned it. So the hunt for smaller wells continued. This time I found a modular solution with small interchangeable wells, so effectively infinite wells. This palette also looked incredibly aesthetically pleasing, a metal gloss finished case, and ended up being absolutely lovely to both look at and hold. It's one of my favorite painting things just to touch. As I just mentioned, this palette was metal. This opened up a world of possibility for magnetizing the interchangeable wells. Using a sheet of sticky back magnets, I just cut little pieces and adhered them to the bottom of the wells. These wells would now semi-securely lock in place and not move around when I started to use them. Another bonus with this potential solution was it came with a lid. You could either have two magnetic pallets at a time or close the lid, making it a little bit safer when moving around, albeit not completely watertight. Practically though, when I was using it, the wells just felt a little bit too big, too deep. There was far too much space for actual speed paint. I only need a couple of drips and really to get any depth in the volume, you needed to add quite a lot. The wells also had quite a large height to the walls, which made it very, very difficult to see over when you were at any sort of angle, essentially dunking your brush into the abyss anytime you needed to get some paint. So with two palettes in now, basically exhausted my backlog of ideas. And that was a lot of hard work, so I felt it was time to go and get myself a nice refreshing beverage.
And as I was making that, suddenly, suddenly it hit me. I needed some more maple syrup. With that silicon in my head now and knowing how easy it would be to pop and clean the speed paint straight off the palette, it was time to head back to the computer, order some new potential palettes. I shopped around and found any options I thought would be fit for purpose. Some with lots of potential wells, other with very minimum wall height trying to address a couple of the problems I'd run into previously, now with the potential of being incredibly easy to clean. One thing I was sure at, at this point in time is I wanted a neutral colour. I wanted to be able to see the colour of the speed paint so I knew which paint was which on the palette. So that's something I kept in mind. It was hard to find solutions that were sort of white, grey or clear, but that's one piece of criteria I was certain on. Now, each of the palettes I managed to find had some positives and some negatives. Some had an incredibly large number of wells, which I thought was fantastic, each being very, very small, so not too wasteful on the paints. However, they just seemed too small with too high a wall height that again, you were just dunking into the abyss. Others had absolutely no wall height and these were fantastic to use, but they came with the negative of not having very many on a palette, so I couldn't use many colors again. You'd have to wait for them to dry, pop them off, and then reuse the palette. And then some were just in between, quite a few wells, not too much height, lots of space to use, but just didn't quite feel right. Once again, I was disheartened and not really in a position to improve my palette situation. But then I stumbled across a site called Timu, a sort of jumble sale of items for basically anything and everything you can imagine. And on there, I found some quarter size interchangeable wells and boom, my aesthetically pleasing palette was back in the game. These quarter size wells hold about two milliliters of water and have a depth or a wall height of about five millimeters, making them both not waste paint and be a height you can see into and dip your brush into with ease. Taking these for a spin, there was an absolute massive improvement. No longer was I wasting paint, I could see what I was doing. I was over the moon. This was a great solution. If somehow I did run out of wells in my case, I've got a bag of another hundred of them. I can just pop some clean ones in and off I go to the races. No chance of running out of wells, no problem seeing in there and no waste of paint. And on top of that, one additional bonus that came in is they're actually relatively easy to clean. Often the resin, would cure, the speed paint would cure, it would dry up and it would just fall out of its own accord. If somehow it got a little bit tacky, a little bit stuck to it, a quick toothpick just in one corner would almost definitely ping it out first try. Now I was almost done with my experiments entirely. A pretty happy solution for myself that looked great on the table when I was painting, but we needed to test the elephant in the room. Frankly, I'm not sure how I thought this would help at all. It would not hold any paint, so I've thrown this away. So that just leaves the crowd favorite. Now this was not mentioned. I've not seen anybody talk about this when I began my quest several months ago. But since then, I've seen tons of people suggesting the popular fidget toy a pop it. If somehow you've never seen these, you probably don't have children. And if you have got children, you've probably got a small stockpile of these sneaky biscuits. Now these are essentially reusable bubble wrap. You can sort of pop them back and forth they make a satisfying touch feel and pop sound and on top of that you can put some paint in them and go ham now i will say when i first heard this suggestion i was incredibly skeptical if nothing else just the fact that it come in weird colors and shapes and i was a little bit concerned i'll be mocked by my peers but on top of that with the weird colors i thought it would be hard to see which colors which on the palette so i was very focused on getting neutral colors and i couldn't find a pop it in a neutral color that was any reasonable price. And my final issue with them is the wells looked kind of deep, so I just thought it would be quite wasteful on the paint. Having said all that, it was time to take one of these for a spin. I tried to get my children's apart with theirs, but apparently they're the best toys they've ever had, despite the fact I've never seen them touch them. So I popped back on Timu and ordered myself a multicolored heart because it was very, very cheap. Still skeptical, especially of the fact it was a whole bunch of colors and I didn't think I'd be able to see what's what. I sat down and did an evening of painting. Not only were the wells a fantastic depth, I could put a tiny amount of paint in, a lot of paint in, depending how big the surface was I was painting. I could see into them clearly. And then the actual multicoloredness just really didn't matter. I didn't want 
get the wrong color. I should also obviously mention the best bit of the poppet is how flexible it is. Once that paint has cured, once it has dried, just give it a tap, put your finger in the back, pop it through, and the paint, the dry paint, it just pops out. Your palette is clean and good to go again. It also has plenty of wells. I got a very small one and I painted four different miniatures yesterday and did not run out of space. And then today it's completely dry, so I'll just pop them all out and I'm good to go for another painting session. The internet, the community is correct. These are a fantastic choice for a speed paint palette. Now I promised you a conclusion and a recommendation and I'm going to show you what I would pick as you can probably already guess because I love them as we've gone through the first and most obvious one is, guys, if you own a pocket, take it for a spin. I promise you, as daft as it sounds, looks, seems, just try it out. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you don't own one, it's worth buying one for under a pound and giving it a try. I think that's the one I'll be using at home going forwards. And I don't think I'll regret it for a second. Bobby has really good sized wells, both in width and depth. It has a decent number of wells and you can get all different sized toys to suit your well desires and you can personalize your palette by picking a color and a shape that you actually enjoy. And finally, and most importantly, it is absolutely ridiculous how easy this is to clean. Just popping the paint out from behind once it's dried. My second recommendation will be the hard metal tin. It's weird, it feels nice in your hand. I feel like a professional painter. I can also take it with me very, very easily. You can cover the paints using its lid so there's no risk of it getting too much in your bag. Now this doesn't have to be an expensive solution. Mine was kind of 20 pounds, but you can buy any metal tin. You can buy the innards and you can use a metallic sheet to stick on the back and make your own. It can be any size, any color, any metal pencil case. You could probably make this for about three pounds. With that, you've got an entirely custom made solution to suit yourself. I don't worry about my family or friends mocking me for using a children's toy to paint my little children's soldiers. Both are easy to clean, the poppet is substantially easier to clean. The hard case does have infinite well potential, but it also costs money and the poppets could be free if you already own any. There you go guys, two fantastic solutions. I'm gonna be happy using either of them going forward. And hopefully if somehow you've been under a rock and you haven't seen people using poppets, this was enlightening for you. If you're not seeing the metal cases too, there's another potential option for you. Thank you all ever so much for watching and see you again soon.